Well, and, and along those lines, I mean, just the nature of of, of big time football. You've got you got staff changes. You got all kinds of changes. And, and to your point, as the leader, you've got to be the calm mm-hmm. person, going, "Okay, here's how we're going to navigate this." Yep. With Dirk Cutter coming on board, I, and, and let me let me just explain how the sausage gets made a little bit here. We're not going to release this podcast for for a few, few days now, yep. but but just yesterday we, we found out that yep. Dirk Cutter is coming on as, as your OC. How cool is that? What what was that process like? Oh, it's awesome. I mean. This is this is the life of a coach is to give you guys a snapshot <laughs> into it. So w- we played an earlier bowl game, so we had time off for Christmas break. But I knew going into it with the transfer portal open, finishing the staff, and I told my wife and girl, I told my wife and girls, like guys, I'm going to be on the phone a lot and be working. But right. as a coach, there's the second signing day period in February that you that you take that week off. So I told my wife, I said, babe, that first week in February is coming. I promise you, when we get there, we're going to be able to take some time, relax, and all. That. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the Saturday before that week that I, you know I talk with Bush, who's who's a good friend of mine. I think the world of me called me and said, "Hey Spence, this is going on." And, right. And I call my wife like, "Babe, that that week <laughs> off, just you know." So those are things you. Once again, we talk about adversity yeah. and responding to them. Right. Okay. What's next? And going through the plan of process and and there's a lot of people like like Coach Peterson's a guy that I lean on a lot now that I reach out to continue like, hey, this is and you got to have those people in your life that you can lean on, mentors 100%. that you can call and Absolutely. um and really bend their ear. Hey, this is what I'm feeling. Am I missing this? Is there another vantage point that maybe I'm not seeing that I should be seeing? And so just like um you know adversity struck. Okay, we're losing our offensive coordinator. What's the plan and process? So right away, right. okay, my process going through it and went through a a slow process because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure I was very thorough from talking to everybody I could, potential guys that I'd either gone against or know, or, you know, every, obviously in that situation, a lot of people are reaching out and are interested in the job. It's a big time oh, job. Course. Of course. We've got great yeah. players. We live in a great place. And I hold it in high regard. And more importantly, it's, it's making sure whoever comes in that building, who they are as a person is everything to me. I will always sacrifice on maybe someone not knowing as much football, as them, but I will never sacrifice on who they are as a person because they're going to be around these young men and right. they're going to impact them for life. And I will never sacrifice them. But I went into it with high standards. I knew that we wanted, obviously, an elite person, yep. who they're going to be to develop these young men and make them the best version of themselves. Then it was a proven play caller, quarterback developer, and someone that continued to grow our offensive staff um, and went through the process, talked to sure. a bunch of people, um, went through the process from interviews to phone calls to Zoom interviews, and throughout the whole process, you know, been in the ears of Coach Pierce and talked to Coach Cutter a lot because something even initially I was like, Coach, what do you thought? I think, and he's like, Spence, let's walk through this process. I, uh, let's walk through this. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll be here. I'll be uh, you know a sounding board for you in regards to your feelings and thoughts as you go through it. Um, and going through the two weeks, um, came back to him and said, Coach, this is this is this is what these are my expectations. This is what I need from right. you. I know you're the right fit. I know you're exactly what our players need. Um, and I'm not settling for anybody but the best for our players. I'm not going to ever settle for anything less than the best for Bronco Nation. And that's exactly what I told him. And I said, Coach Cutter, you're the guy. And he's like, I got to go talk to my wife. <laughs> and, you know, I'm retired, so I got to go. And, and Happy went, wife, yep, happy life, yep, all that stuff. No question. <laughs> right. And because I knew in my heart, I was like, he is the best fit for our players, this place. And he's exactly what we need. It wasn't like, well, Coach, I think he's like, I told my coach, you're the one. Nah. You're the guy for the job. You're the guy not only for right now, but also to help develop our offensive staff and the offensive schemes and our players for the future, even past this season. You're the guy. Right. And he came back and, and told me, Spence, I'll do it. Let's go roll. So that's cool. can't be more excited. I think the world of Coach Cutter, I think the world of our entire staff. And so sure. whoever we bring into that building, who they are as people matters to me. And then obviously the skill set they have to do an elite job is also a paramount. Mm-hmm.